we shall commence this module by understanding the planning post reform era post 1990s with the adoption of new economic policy in july 1991 there was a sea change in the role of planning in the development process state participation underwent a profound transformation both qualitative and quantitative in the new development model the five year plan becomes more indicative in nature wherein the indicated targets are to be achieved largely through the private sector and the market forces however the public sector's role undergoes a change and would confine itself to building and strengthening and coordinating the private sector thus the development strategy since 1990s focused on growth with equity and social justice but with a greater reliance on the private sector market mechanism and through liberalization of trade and foreign investment after studying this module you shall be able to learn the achievements of planning in the post reforms era identify the role of planning in the growth of various sectors evaluate the failures of planning in the post reforms era analyze the impact of planning on growth poverty and unemployment let us now move on to discuss the achievements in the post reforms era first is the rise in the growth rate the development strategy since 1990 focused on growth with equity and social justice but with a greater reliance on the private sector market mechanism and through trade and foreign investment there has been a discernible impact on the gdp growth rate due to the adoption of economic reforms after 1990s india could come out of the hindu growth rate tag the economy has entered an average growth rate of 7 to 8% the economic survey of 2007 and 2008 summed up the success of the new economic policy in the following words an analysis of post independence growth experience shows two statistically significant breaks in the rate of growth of the economy the first break occurred in the early 1980s when the economy moved from what has been commonly described as the hindu growth rate of around 3.5% to 5.5% this followed a policy shift away from the excessive control and restriction on the private enterprise towards gradual decontrol the second break occurred in mid 1990s with the ushering in deeper and broad based reforms at the beginning of the decade the step up in the gdp growth rate to 6.5% in late 1990s and further to 7.8% during the 10th plan with the last 3 years averaging over 9% is evidence of the success of these policy measures second is the rise in exports and large build up of foreign exchange reserves the onset of reforms in 1990s led to the good performance of the export sector though the major export earnings came through the software exports other sectors also contributed too the earnings from exports helped us to avert any deterioration in the balance of trade as our imports were growing thus surpluses from the current accounts led to the comfortable balance of payment position india's foreign exchange reserves which had fallen to low levels during the 1990s crisis gradually rose from 2 billion dollar in 1991 to 305 dollar billion in may 2008 
there was also large amount of funds inflow by foreign institutional investors and increase in remittances by non-resident Indians which was a good sign for the economy. Third is surges in inflow of foreign investment. The new economic policy of the 1990s heralded the era of liberalization, privatization and globalization. The new economic policy consequently adopted a liberal policy towards foreign capital. It opened up the possibilities of a greater participation to foreign investors in different sectors along with the Indian private sector. Fourth is growth of the private sector. The abolition of the licensing system and removal of restrictions on the entry of the private sector in the areas earlier reserved for the public sector heralded the era of rapid growth of the private sector. The private sector entered into new eras and expanded the production and employment opportunities. The much needed investment and growth potentialities saw phenomenal rise. Fifth is the control of inflation. The post-reform era witnessed considerable success in control of inflation. The benefit of the economic reforms on inflation seemed to be considerable. The rate of inflation was around 2% in 2002 to 3 and then it went up. The reforms brought in high growth rates and productivity increase. Sixth is the robust performance of the service sector. The first decade of planned development saw the agriculture sector contributing more than half of the GDP while the industrial sector and the services sector contributed 16 and 28% respectively. During the period from 1960 to 1980, there was a slow and gradual improvement in the services sector's share. It increased to over 34%. Interestingly, this improvement was accompanied by the growth of the industrial sector also. However, with the onset of reforms, the share of the service sector went up to 44% but that of industry was at 27%. The robust performance of the sector is due to the nature of the sector and its linkages with the other two sectors. The service sector includes both public administration, defense, which are independent of the level of economic development and also the services like transport, communication, tourism which are closely interlinked with the level of economic development. Moving on to discuss the failures of planning in the post reforms era. First one is the agriculture has not gained much. Agriculture is the backbone of the Indian economy and it needs a greater focus to enhance the productivity and linkages to the other sectors. There is a need for making farming a lucrative option with the help of developments in technology, financial innovations and the growth of manufacturing and service sector. The agriculture sector needs reforms to achieve high growth. Encouraging initiative and enterprise of farmers, encouraging private sectors, removal of restriction on agricultural trade, processing activities and strengthening infrastructure are still lacking. Growth performance of the three sectors in percentage are given as follows. In the period from 1950 to 51 to 1959-60, share in the GDP from service, industry and agriculture was 28%, 16% and 56% respectively and the growth rate was 
5.7% and 2.1%. In the period from 1960-61 to 1969-70, the share of GDP from service, industry and agriculture was 31.2%, 21% and 47.8% respectively and the growth rate was 4.9%, 6.5% and 2.5%. In the period from 1970-71 to 1979-80, share in GDP from service, industry and agriculture was 34.4%, 22.8% and 42.8% respectively and the growth rate was 4.5%, 3.7% and 1.3%. In the period from 1980-81 to 1989-90, the share in GDP from service, industries and agriculture was 38.6%, 25%, 36.4% respectively and the growth rate was 6.6%, 6.8% and 4.4% respectively. In the period from 1990-91 to 1999-2000, the share in GDP from service, industry and agriculture was 44.3%, 27.1% and 28.6% respectively and the growth rates were 7.6%, 5.9% and 2.9% respectively. In the period from 2000 to 2001 to 2004-05, the share in GDP from services, industry and agriculture was 52.6%, 25.8% and 21.6% respectively and the growth rate were 8.1%, 7.3% and 2.1% respectively. In the period from 2005-06, the share in GDP from services, industry and agriculture was 54%, 24.3% and 21.6% respectively and the growth rates were 16.5%, 10.7% and 5.7% respectively. In the period from 2006-07, the share in GDP from services, industry and agriculture was 54.8%, I repeat 24.6% and 20.5% respectively and the growth rate was 11.2%, 11.2% and 4.4% respectively. In the period from 2007 to 2008, the share in GDP from services, industries and agriculture was 55.7%, 24.5% and 19.8% respectively and the growth rate was 10.8%, 8.5% and 4.7% respectively. Second, is the problem of poverty still not solved? Economic reforms have not been successful in solving the problem of poverty in India. Though poverty ratio has declined from nearly 55% in 1973-74 to 27.5% in 2004 and 5. The fact remains that around 30 crore people still live under poverty. According to some economists, there have not been much efforts in alleviation of poverty in the post-reforms era. Also, there is a widespread apprehension that the economic reforms are anti-poor. 
some even point out that in the name of fiscal consolidation and reforms there is a curtailment of many anti-poverty programs. Third, unemployment is on rise. The new economic policy has led to a rise in employment of skilled and trade workforce. The rise in GDP growth rate is due to the growth of the service sector particularly. In the rural areas, there is a huge problem of unemployment on account of lack of demand for unskilled workers and also to the falling opportunities in the agriculture sector. Their numbers keep on swelling and they led a life of abject poverty and unemployment. Let us know the poverty ratio and the number of people below poverty. In the year 1973-74, the poverty ratio was 54.9%, that is around 32.1 crores. In the year 1977-78, the poverty ratio was 51.3%, that is around 32.9 crores. In the year 1983-84, the poverty ratio was 44.5% that is around 32.3 crores. In the year 1987-88, the poverty ratio was 38.9% that is around 30.7 crores. In the year 1993-94, the poverty ratio was 36 percent that is around 32 crores. In the year 2004 and 5 the poverty ratio was 27.5 percent that is around 30.2 crores. The source for the same data is Planning Commission of India. Fourth, is plight of agricultural laborers has worsened. The agriculture laborers continue to be the most backward and neglected class of the rural economy. Their number is too large and it keeps on growing. They live in absolute poverty and form the weakest link in the rural India. Low income and lack of regular employment makes them more vulnerable. In spite of so many programs of government, these people live in abject poverty and economic reforms has further neglected them. Fifth is industrial performance could have been better. The economic reforms introduced in 1990s liberated the industrial sector from licenses, controls and restrictions. The private sector gained entry into earlier restricted areas, allowance of flow of foreign capital encouraged competition. However, during the first decade after the reforms, growth rate of the industry happened to be lower than that of the pre-reform period. The slowdown could be due to the factors like lagged reaction of reforms, infrastructural constraints, low public investment, low level of growth in the agricultural sector, poor availability of credit and sudden competition from the foreign goods. In the words of Isher Judge Ehluwalia, the 1990s have certainly been an eventful period for the industrial economy of India. Crisis, reform, adjustment, recovery, rapid growth and then downslide, this decade has seen almost every phase which an economy could. Sixth is rural areas still neglected. Since a vast majority of poverty is found in the rural areas, greater emphasis should be placed on rapid development of the rural areas. There is a need for rapid development of agriculture 
and other rural vocations like poultry, fisheries, animal husbandry, along with setting up of other value added industries. But the rural areas are still neglected and the opportunities for employment have not grown up. People migrate to urban areas in search of employment opportunities. Now, let us summarize what we have discussed in this module. The development strategy since 1990s focused on growth with equity and social justice, but with a greater reliance on the private sector, market mechanism and through liberalization of trade and foreign investments. Next, there has been a discernible impact on GDP growth rate due to the adoption of the economic reforms after 1990s. India could come out of the Hindu growth rate tag. The economy has entered an average growth rate of 7 to 8 percent. Next, the onset of reforms in 1990 led to the good performance of the export sector. Though major export earnings came through the software exports, other sectors have also contributed too. The earnings from the exports helped us to avert any deterioration in the balance of trade as our imports were also growing. Next, India's foreign exchange reserves which has fallen to the low levels during the 1990s and 1991, the crisis gradually rose from $2 billion in 1991 to $305 billion in May 2008. There was also a large amount of funds inflow by the foreign institutional investors and an increase in the remittances by the non-resident Indians which was a good sign for the economy. Next, the new economic policy of 1990s heralded the era of liberalization, privatization and globalization. The new economic policy consequently adopted a liberal policy towards foreign capital. Next, it opened up the possibilities of a greater participation to foreign investors in different sectors along with the Indian private sector. Next, the abolition of the licensing system and removal of restrictions on the entry of the private sectors in the areas earlier reserved for the public sector heralded the era of rapid growth of the private sector. Next, the private sector entered into new areas and has expanded the production and employment opportunities. The much needed investment and growth potentialities saw phenomenal rise. Next, the post-reform era witnessed considerable success in the control of inflation. The average annual inflation basically was in control. Next, the benefits of the economic reforms on inflation seems to be considerable. The rate of inflation was around 2% in 2002 and 2003 and then it went up. The reforms brought in high growth rates and productivity increase. Next, agriculture is the backbone of the Indian economy and it needs a greater focus to enhance the productivity and linkage to the other sectors. There is a need for making farming a lucrative option with the help of developments in technology, financial innovation and the growth of manufacturing and service sector. The agriculture sector needs reforms to achieve high growth. 
encouraging initiative and enterprises of farmers, encouraging private sectors, removal of restrictions on agricultural trade, processing activities and strengthening the infrastructure are still lacking. Next, economic reforms have not been successful in solving the problem of poverty in India. Though the poverty ratio has declined from nearly 55% in 1973-74 to 27.5% in 2004 and 5, the fact remains that around 30 crore people still live in poverty. Next, the new economic policy has led to a rise in employment of skilled and trained workforce. The rise in growth rate of GDP is due to the growth of the service sector particularly. In the rural areas, there is a huge problem of unemployment on account of lack of demand for unskilled workers and also to the falling opportunities in the agriculture sector. Their numbers keep on swelling and they led a life of abject poverty and unemployment. Next, the agricultural laborers continue to be the most backward and neglected class of the rural economy. Their number is too large and it keeps growing. They live in the absolute poverty and form the weakest link in the rural India. Next, the economic reforms introduced in 1990s liberated the industrial sector from licensing control and restrictions. The private sector gained entry into the earlier restricted areas. Allowance of flow of foreign capital has encouraged competition. Next, however, during the first decade after the reforms, the growth rate of industry happened to be lower than that of the pre-reform period. The slowdown could be due to the factors like lagged reaction of reforms, infrastructural constraints, low public investment, low level of growth in the agricultural sector, poor availability of credit and sudden competition from foreign goods. Next, since a vast majority of poverty is found in the rural areas, greater emphasis should be placed on rapid development of the rural areas. There is a need for rapid development of agricultural and other rural vocations like poultry, fisheries, animal husbandry along with setting up of other value-added industries. But the rural areas are still neglected and the opportunities for employment have not grown up there. People migrated to urban areas in search of employment opportunities and the situation of agriculture sector remains vulnerable.